Hey there, welcome to the Grace Health Podcast, your source for aging strong in your physical, mental, and spiritual health. My name is Amy Connell. I'm a weight neutral certified personal trainer and nutrition coach who loves walks with friends, chocolate, and Jesus. Whether you're looking to grow stronger as you age, nourish your body, mind, and spirit, or fit all the pieces of your health together to holistically thrive, this is the place for women over 40. I'm here to guide you in the areas I can and bring on experts in the areas I'm still learning. And of course, we cover it all in a lot of grace. I'm glad you're here. And if you're new here, I invite you to check out season 19, starting January 9th, 2024, to fully understand the foundation of the show. In short, this is an intuitive eating based, grace filled, Christ centered show focusing on women over 40 who want to age resiliently in a holistic way. And then be sure to check out the episode. 30 plus non-gym ways to improve your health and grab the free download that goes with it. All of those links are in the show notes. We are in a season on intuitive eating. As I shared a couple of weeks ago, we did make that stake in the ground at the beginning of 2024. And I thought it was appropriate to get into all of the individual 10 principles of intuitive eating. So I have invited some of the women who are in a Facebook group community that I'm in, who are other Christ-centered women, um, intuitive eating focused. And today we're focusing on principle two, honor your hunger. So Victoria Yates has joined me today. Let me tell you a bit about Victoria before we get on. She's a registered nurse certified health coach and certified intuitive eating and body image coach for women, specializing in women to stop dieting and love their bodies through learning how to eat intuitively. With all the pressure to eat perfectly and have a perfect body, it's no wonder that you feel stressed about how you should eat. Amen to that. Victoria teaches how to help how to have a healthy lifestyle built on the science behind intuitive eating and deepen your relationship with yourself so that you never have to go on another diet again. And all the people said, amen to that. Victoria, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Thank you so much, Amy, for having me. I've really been enjoying this series and I have been recording these episodes just whenever it works out for me and so for my guest. And so I am, it's fun talking with you because I've covered a lot of them on the back end, but you're the second one. So you're coming in early talking about honoring your hunger. So before we get going, I would love it if you would share high level what this principle means. Yeah. So as you already shared, honoring our hunger, honor your hunger is the second principle of intuitive eating. And even though the authors of intuitive eating, they say, you know, the principles really aren't something that we have to follow step by step. And I find this with my clients too. We're kind of jumping around and really working on each of the principles as they need and as they come up. But I really will say honoring our hunger is a pretty foundational aspect of intuitive eating. And I think, you know, first thought, it's pretty self-explanatory. You know, we want to eat when we're hungry. And what I find, though, for a lot of people, and so maybe people listening are thinking this when it comes to honoring your hunger, I find for a lot of people, they kind of write this one off because they think, oh, I do that. I like that's actually like too much of my problem. I honor my hunger way too much. And I encourage people listening to not write this off and to look for what you can learn here, because I actually find that for a lot of people, even the people who say, oh no, like I I don't struggle with honoring my hunger in honoring our hunger. And, you know, on the flip side, people often say more so, oh, I have a hard time feeling my fullness. They go hand in hand. And so it really is important to really understand our bodies. And really that's what this principle is all about. It's about feeling confident, knowing when you're hungry, knowing what that feels like in your body, not questioning. I think a lot of times we struggle with like questioning, like, am I really hungry? And then we, you know, put it off and, you know, or we're like, hunger is kind of this badge of honor. And so we kind of push it away and we just like suppress it and we, you know, try to get by eating as the least amount possible. And we drink the coffee and the diet soda and the seltzer to try to like not, not be hungry. And so we do all of these things, but 
we really, it really is such, like I already said, it's such a foundational aspect of intuitive eating and it affects all of the other principles. And it specifically really does affect, like if you're struggling, and I find this for a lot of my clients who struggle with stopping when they're full, a lot of times it comes back to hunger and either not honoring it, like when we first noticed those early cues of hunger and like waiting too long or, you know, not eating enough throughout the day. And so then you get to the end of the day and then you're famished and that's where you're raiding your pantry. And so I always tell people, you know, if, if they're coming to me and saying, oh, I really struggle with like the stopping when I'm full, we the first thing that we always look at is, all right, are you honoring your hunger? Like, are you really honoring your hunger? And so we can talk a little bit about like, because this is a spectrum, right? Honoring our hunger, there's early hunger cues and then there's late hunger cues. And so a lot of what we work on is, okay, getting back in touch with those early hunger cues and what those are for each individual person. And then also just like getting rid of that fear of eating too much, eating too often, and really building that trust with their bodies when it comes to hunger. So there's so much more we could like dive into with that, but I hope that that's a little bit of a just general, this is what honoring our hunger looks like and what it is. Yeah, that's good. And as you were talking, you said a couple things that I want to thread together because as you know, someone who grew up in diet culture, I mean, that was just all around us and it takes a while to kind of relearn our thing. I mean, one thing is when you talk about staving off your hunger, I feel like diet culture has taught us that hunger is bad. Yeah, yes. This is something that we don't want. And so you drink the seltzer water or well, have some water and just make sure that you, you know, and then wait 30 minutes and see if you really are hunger. And I feel like that does, you're right. It does go hand in hand with so many of our stories of, I got up, I had a quote, good breakfast, a light breakfast. And then I had a, you know, a quote, good lunch uh, that was not enough fuel. And then we find ourselves consuming the entire pantry at 4 p.m. And it's because we have not honored our hunger. And because that is almost a bad word in diet culture language, because you're trying to avoid it rather than respond to it. Mm -hmm. You mentioned a spectrum. Can we dig into that? I would love for you to kind of guide us through this spectrum of hunger. So maybe there are some things that we are missing that are uh, signs of hunger that maybe we didn't realize even were. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So like I said, hunger is a spectrum. And so we have early hunger cues and late hunger cues. So your early hunger cues are going to be a lot softer, less pronounced. And so for a lot of my clients who, you know, they're not used to letting their hunger be the thing that guides them to eat, you know, they're used to, you know, oh, it's time to eat or, you know, or whatnot, like everybody else is eating. And so they're not used to actually letting their bodies be the thing that is guiding them eating. They might not even notice these early hunger cues, but they're going to be a lot less pronounced than the late hunger cues. So early hunger cues are, you know, typically kind of like more of a slight emptiness in your stomach. It's not going to feel like so grumbly, but it's going to be just like a slight emptiness that you notice. And then some other like really common early hunger cues that people usually don't realize are actually hunger cues is just starting to think about food. So sometimes we like have that. And then again, if we think hunger is bad or, you know, I don't want to eat it, you know, we're afraid to actually like eat because we think, oh, that it's too soon. We might not even notice that we might think that that's a bad thing, but that is actually our body giving us the cue. It's it's time to start think of, thinking about putting a meal together, putting a snack together. So starting to think about food or just starting to get distracted really easily. So this might look like, you know, you're sitting at work, you're trying to do some work and you just cannot focus and you find yourself kind of trying to like jump around a bunch of different things that can be an early sign of hunger. And what late hunger cues are like, like I already said, they're a lot more pronounced. And so ideally we want to not wait this long to eat, but it happens, right? We're not perfect. We don't have to be perfect at this, but typically, you know, this is where people, especially people who aren't in touch with 
like those early hunger cues, this is going to feel a lot more uncomfortable. So you're going to be feeling that really uncomfortable, like stomach growling, like feeling like your stomach is just like doing somersaults in your belly. Um, also mood changes. So that's where you start to feel hangry and maybe some dizziness and just some, you know, just some changes in again, how you're feeling. And it's just a lot more pronounced. So the the analogy that I really like for this, that I think is really helpful is imagine that you are, you're at home and you go to visit your neighbor's house. You know that your neighbor is there and you see their car and you see the lights on the, in the house. You know that they're there. When you first show up at their door, what are you going to do? You're just going to slightly knock on that door, right? You're just going to do like a slight, like, okay, let me just like, I'm not going to be banging on the door right away. So this is like, I like to think of that slight, small little knock on your neighbor's door as those early hunger cues. So when we're experiencing those first signs of hunger, it's like your body is just doing that slight, like, hello, it's almost time to eat. And then, you know, in that same analogy, the more that time goes by and your neighbor's not answering the phone or not answering the door, you know, what are you going to do? You're going to be pounding on that door and be like, hello. So those are like more of the late hunger cues. So you can kind of think of that image when you think of early hunger cues versus late hunger cues. So that is kind of that explained. But yeah, like I said, we want to work towards eating more with those early hunger cues and really just not being afraid to even get it wrong. I really don't think there's any there's no getting it wrong. I think what trips people up a lot of times is they get so concerned with doing it wrong. And I mean, that's how we learn. But typically those are kind of the differences, you know, earlier going to be a lot less pronounced late are going to be a lot more like in your face. And that's where you're going to feel that urgency to eat. And, you know, we talked earlier about, we don't, we want to, the reason why we don't want to wait to those early hung, or late hunger cues is because it's going to be a lot harder to eat mindfully. It's going to be a lot harder to, you know, put together a balanced meal that's going to feel really good in your body and fuel your body well, because, you know, that's where you're going to find yourself like, I just need to get food in my body right now. And you might find yourself, you know, at the end of your meal or that snack being like, I didn't even really want that because we're just not able to be, we're not able to think as clearly. We're not able to make as intentional, mindful choices and decisions when it comes to eating. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's all good. And I like the analogy of knocking on the door. I think, I mean, I'm sitting here right now thinking I'm, oh, I could really use some food. <laughs> Yeah. And so we're talk- talking about it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Well, I also had like a really early lunch and all of that kind of stuff. But okay, let's go into that. So what happens when we get into these situations where we want to respond, but I don't really think that anyone wants me smacking their ears while I'm talking with you and they're listening on a podcast. What happens when we get in these situations when we can't honor it? Then what? Mm-hmm. I may not know you personally, but this is what I do believe about you. You care about your health, you care about your faith, and you are trying to find places, safe places to put those together. I am thrilled to be a part of the new app called The Stronger Collective. It blends faith and fitness seamlessly. It has scripture-filled workouts, supportive coaching, and community engagement, and has recipes for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. We have 10 health professionals here to guide you in your holistic health in all kinds of different areas. And yes, I get to focus on the women over 40. So excited for that. Check out the Stronger Collective to level up your health journey. Link is in the show notes. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think first of all, what we can do is like, obviously, you know, for you, it's like, okay, you're in this. We can't just like, all right, I got to leave and go eat. But I think it's it, if we can kind of use that as really just helpful information for maybe the next time. And so I, I was talking to a client about this actually, cause she was, she was actually like making herself wrong for eating before she was hungry. So for this situation, what I would say is, you know, maybe next time what happens is 
you know, you have a moment before recording a podcast, or if you know you work and you are about to go into a meeting, or you have kids and everybody's eating and you're not actually hungry, but you know that it's like the, you know, this is like the best opportunity to eat. You know, it's still honoring our hunger, even if we're, it's almost like that preventative, you know, eating for that <laughs> hunger that's like the future hunger. And that is still honoring your hunger. But like I was saying, this client of mine was, making herself wrong for eating, you know, when her kids were eating, even when she wasn't actually hungry, because she was like, this is the best time for me to eat. And I know if I, you know, wait until I'm actually hungry, it's I'm not going to be able to eat. And so I think, you know, there's a lot of grace with this too, is like, you know, we can, you know, maybe for next time, okay, I'm going to have a little snack going into this meeting or going into this podcast, or I'm going to actually eat with my kids because I know I'm going to be hungry. And that also is honoring our hunger. That's good to know. Thanks. I'm what about the times when we have sort of conditioned ourselves to be hungry or not hungry based on, you know, what our activity is, or how much we've had or something like that. And I love how I think it was Leslie Schilling taught us one, one time on here that you like your body your body's not like on a clock. I mean, it's not, it's not on a schedule and it's not on a 24 hour schedule, but I think we have in our mind, I had a really big dinner last night. How can I be hungry for breakfast? Or, you know, I've just eaten so much or, or when we start questioning our body, because logically it doesn't make sense. Can you talk us through this and how to negotiate that when our mind doesn't maybe maybe it's just that our mind doesn't believe our belly. Yes. Yes. So what I would say to this is I think that I think that what is important to remember is that we are not robots. <laughs> and I think diet yeah. culture kind of like like that's a little bit of the perspective that it we have is that okay, I'm just going to need this number of calories or macros every single day like clockwork. And the reality is we're not robots. We are humans and every day's energy is different. Every day's nutritional needs are different, especially as women like who mm -hmm. have cycles. And even if we're out of that period of our lives, like we're still, you know, we have different needs. We're doing different things in our day. We're more active some days than others. And our, our body is functioning differently and, and its needs are different every single day. And so, I mean, this is why following a strict calorie or macro type diet doesn't work because, mm -hmm. you know, it's actually, and I think this is the thing to remember is we've been told, okay, this is all we need every single day, but that is not the truth. The truth is every single day, our needs are different. And so I think it, you know, knowing that can help just like put us at ease when, yeah, it might not make sense. And I think sometimes we might, it might make sense. And I think in those moments, it can be helpful to be like, oh, just like from this curious place, ask yourself, okay, I wonder why I'm more hungry right now. I always like with my clients, you know, we'll, we'll explore this together. They're, you know, they'll share, okay, I, I was like so hungry today. I'm, I just don't get it. I would just like, couldn't stop eating. And then when we explore it together, usually we discover, oh, I was like super active yesterday, or I did, I don't think I ate enough yesterday. And then today, you know, my body's kind of making up for it. And it's not to say that every day we're going to have that explanation. Sometimes we won't, but sometimes we do. And so I think it's helpful to just be curious and, and ask like, okay, I wonder, I wonder what's going on here and also not be judgmental about it. Just have that like neutrality with it. But I also find it helpful to, to understand. And I remember the first time I learned about this, it was really freeing and empowering learning that hunger, the cue and the feeling, the sensation of hunger is literally tied directly to our cells needing energy. So from a cellular level, like when our cells physically are low on energy and ATP, it releases that signal that, that tells us that, that sends that physical sensation of hunger. And so it's like, that just made sense to me, at least like, you know, first of all, knowing, okay, every day is going to be different. We're not robots, we're humans. So, you know, I can trust my body 
and, and I can trust my body because this physical sensation is real. It's not made up. And that comes with time. That comes with really building confidence with understanding your body and understanding those like actual cues of hunger. But I find that that can be really helpful for people, those two things. When you were talking about those days that I ha- I certainly have, I have to imagine my community has them as well of like, I am so hungry all day long. My husband and I, whenever we have them, we joke, I feel like Katniss Evergreen in the Hunger Games gave such a good language to that. She called it hollow games or I'm having a hollow day. That's what it was. Hollow days where you just can't, I don't know if you read those books or not, but we read them when they first came out. It was a long time ago. (laughs) A long time ago. Yeah. And, but it's fun to have, it's fun to be able to name it. I shouldn't say fun. That's not the right word, but it's helpful to be able to name, like I'm having a hollow day. And then, you know, we can normally like have a bigger lunch or have more fat or more protein or, you know, whatever it is. And that seems to help, but it's nice to have the language with that. Okay. I want to spend a minute on fasting because there are a lot of different meanings of fasting and particularly in the Christian community. I mean, Jesus calls us to fast. Jesus did fast. And I think there are times that some of us will fast for spiritual reasons But then with the little thing in the back of our head saying, but maybe I'll lose a little bit of weight out of this, right? Or maybe we, I mean, I will say, I wrote a book that came out in November 21 called Your Worthy Body. I'm so proud of the book. There's so much in there that I still believe. And yet there's some diet culture in there because I didn't know what I didn't know. And I talk about fasting and I'm like, okay, what do I do with that now? Because I just want to take that part out of the book. So I don't know that I have a great question on it, but I imagine because you're sitting here nodding at me, you've got some thoughts. (laughs) And so (laughs) what are your thoughts in fasting for spiritual purposes, fasting to get closer to the Lord, to ask for guidance versus diet culture fasting? And how do those sometimes butt heads and where can our mind what what kind of mindset shifts can we make to make sure that we're doing it purely for spiritual purposes? So that's a big, complicated question, but yeah. I'll just open the floor to your thoughts on all of that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it really comes down to our intentions and really only, only us and the Lord can know our intentions. Right. And so I think that our intentions and our motivations really does, it really matters. And I think it's helpful to have an awareness that, I mean, diet culture absolutely exists in the church and going into fasting, like if we can just ask ourselves and just be honest and real with ourselves about what are, what is my motivation here? Is it, you know, the purpose, like you said, the purpose is to seek the Lord and be closer to him, like feel that nearness to him and, and hear from him and like limit distractions and be, you know, build up that reliance on him. And it can be a really beautiful thing. And also, like you said, too, it can also bring about these, these like very kind of diety thoughts. And so I think, you know, asking ourselves what, you know, what's my motivation asking the Lord, we can always ask him, like, help me to see what my motivation is here, help my motivation to be pure and holy, you know, and be purposeful. And, um, I, I would say too, that I, I believe that there's, there are some people who in time periods that, you know, someone might go through that maybe fasting is not, or fasting of food might not be like the right thing for them. Such as like, if you're struggling with an eating disorder, I remember I I did a fast when I was like, you know, struggling with an eating disorder. And I mean, there was definitely like a pure intention. There was definitely a pure intention in there. And like you said, too, there was also this like, I feel holier than (laughs) because I can do this because I have this willpower to like go through this day and not eat anything. And so there was definitely, I admit, like, sadly, there was like some selfishness there and pride in that. but. 
I think we can ask the Lord for that intention. Also knowing that like, if you have to go through a period of time where you're, you're not able to fast in that way, and it would be better to not, then that's okay too. And there's other ways that we can, there's other things we can fast from. So I don't know. Those are a couple of like first thoughts that okay. I have. Yeah. Yeah. That's, those are good. Those are good. Thank you for that. Okay. I would love for you to walk us through a very, and that is say you just, maybe you're hungry at like four. It's not lunch. It's not time for dinner. You know, you're going to be starting dinner or going out or whatever in a couple hours. What do we, I mean, I, I hate saying like, what do we do then? But do you have any guidance? Cause this, I think is a really common problem. And I know one thing, one challenge for me is like, when I eat, I want to eat, like, I want to eat a meal. I don't want to just have a little something. And so then I end up eating like more than I want. And then I'm, and then I've got dinner and it's, I'm like, Oh, this is just didn't work out today. So I'm learning to give myself grace on that. But what about those times when our, maybe it's like our schedule that we have, because we do have schedules. We do have times that we all sit down for dinner at 630 with our family or whatever, but it's not necessarily lining up with our body cues. Yeah. Well, I think that in that moment, if you're, you know, you get to 4 PM and you're really hungry, which happens a lot to me too, right? It's like at that point, yeah, it's really normal. You know, it's been a couple hours since you probably ate lunch. So it's really normal to feel hungry about that time. What I personally like to do is I like to, first of all, think about that time period and, you know, snacking during that time period is like, I want to just kind of bridge myself to dinner. And so, and also, so I, I want to like eat enough to just like curb that hunger, but not be totally full. And then with that, I find it helpful to, and this is where applying some of, you know, what we talk about with intuitive eating, like gentle nutrition principles. So making a snack that has some carbs, fat, protein, and or fiber in it. So, you know, maybe this looks like a little mini meal. So maybe it's, you know, like some crackers and cheese and some like veggies and hummus or something like that, that I can just like have like a little meal that is going to be satisfying, is going to help me not to get to dinner and be so ravenous that I'm like not able to eat mindfully like we talked about before and actually be able to enjoy my meal because I'm like focused and not so hungry, but also be able to enjoy my meal and not be totally full from this snack. So that's kind of the mindset that I think about. So you can create for yourself like a little mini meal, including some of those macronutrients and yeah, think of it like a bridge. So mm -hmm. a bridge to get you to that next meal. And as you're talking, I'm also thinking it's a great opportunity to add in some foods that maybe you haven't had as much of that day. Like maybe you haven't had as many fruits or maybe you haven't had as many vegetables or protein or something like that. And so maybe think of it as a time to supplement mm -hmm. what, you know, to, to what would equal a balanced day. Not that every day has to be perfect at all, but it's just maybe an opportunity to add in some of the other things that, that we haven't had as much of. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me ask you this. Is there anything that you are dying to say about honoring our hunger that we have not talked about? Yeah. Well, I think that I was just thinking about this as you were talking that I think it's helpful to also understand, because again, my brain kind of always goes to like physiology and our bodies and what's going on. And I think it's helpful to understand that it is normal to eat about every like three to five hours, more like three to four. And so I think that that can be a helpful thing for people to know, like, okay, like I'm just like, I'm listening to my body, but I also, I, I, I can almost anticipate that, you know, if it's been three hours and I'm starting to get hungry, that is probably like accurate. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think that that can be helpful. And also on the same side, if I'm getting hungry a lot, hurt hungry a lot sooner than that, it's a really good cue to say, oh, maybe I'm not actually getting full enough at my meal at the prior meal. So maybe I need to eat a little bit more. So that can be something that I think is helpful. And it's literally because our, our body's glycogen stores are getting depleted about that time. And so 
I find that that's help for me, at least like, I love having some of that science too, to like pair with like the physical of my body, like the physical sensation. Cause I think, I think intuitive eating, a lot of people are like, oh, this is all just like woo and like feelings. And it's like, no, this is, this is science-based. And so for me, at least it helps to know like, oh yeah, of course I'm hungry right now. It's been X number of Mm times. Like this is hunger. This is real. And then I would just say one last thing that, you know, I think like we were saying before, I think hunger can be this thing that we just feel weird about. And I think there's almost like two extremes with it. There's the, you know, I'm afraid of being hungry. And maybe that comes, you know, a lot of times what I find for my clients is that comes from something from their childhood that, you know, is like almost like this food trauma, you know, maybe there was some scarcity from their childhood. So they're afraid to, you know, they were put on diets when they were young. So they're afraid to be hungry. Or there's the flip side of like, it feels good to be hungry. Like I remember for me, because I had, I wouldn't, I wasn't necessarily diagnosed at the time, but like looking back, this was, I had absolutely an eating disorder and I, it was like a badge of honor to be hungry. And it was almost like, like this emotion, it was like emotionally not eating. (laughs) And so it was (laughs) like this thing that made me, you know, was like my way of coping with things. But all that to say, I think that understanding that, okay, our hunger is a gift and honoring our hunger is a gift that we, we have like this privilege of, you know, being hungry. I know that that's not true for everyone. So I say that also to say like, that can be a really hard thing, but I think meeting ourselves where we're at, seeing it as like, if we're able to honor our hunger, like that is a, that is a gift that we get, you know, having food readily available is a gift and not something that we have to fear. So, yeah. That's good. Yeah. Okay. I know you are the host of the redefining health podcast. Tell us really quickly a bit about your show and then how people can connect with you if they want to. Sure. Yes. So I have the redefining health podcast. We, I have a ton of episodes over there. I also have a whole series on the intuitive eating principles that was back in 2020 three or 2022. I don't remember. I also did it starting in January. So yes, I'm that show it's, it's, you know, obviously we talk a lot about intuitive eating and really just like, yeah, redefining what it means to be healthy and having conversations about that. And just, I love to talk to about how to navigate. Okay. How do we not diet? Cause I don't want to go down that road, but also I still want to prioritize my health. And so navigating kind of that, How do we not be all or nothing with it? And how do we navigate that messy middle of, of, of what that looks like to prioritize our health, but without the restrictiveness, without being all or nothing with it. So yeah, that is, that's a lot of what we talk about. We talk a lot about body image. So a little bit about a little bit of everything. That sounds good. Awesome. So go check that out if you want to, and where people can connect with you, Victoria, real quick. Yeah. So you can find me at my website. It's victoria-yates.com. And you can also find me on Instagram at non-diet underscore RN. Perfect. Okay, Victoria, you get the last word. What is the one simple thing you want us to remember about our conversation today? Yeah. So I think the, just to sum it all up, I think the biggest thing to remember would be just to see our hunger as a gift and to not be afraid of it, not be afraid of honoring our hunger and really just looking at it as a way that we can get to know our bodies that God created a little bit better. That's great. Okay. That's all for today. Go out there and have a graced day. Hey, if you are loving the Graced Health Podcast and want to take your support to the next level, I invite you to join Graced Health Plus, our subscription community. As a Graced Health Plus member, you'll also receive subscriber-only episodes, and you'll also get audio chapters to my latest book, Your Core Strength. It's a great one to listen with the young woman in your life, or it's also great for you as well. You'll also have the opportunity to connect with like-minded women during our monthly Zoom meetups. 
where we'll share our experiences, we offer support, and celebrate our successes together. Grace Health Plus is only $6 a month, and by joining, you'll not only be investing in your own well-being and the future of this podcast. Sign up at the bottom of the show notes where it says, join Grace Health Plus, and I hope to see you on our next monthly Zoom.